Hello and welcome to the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you news developments from across the world. Our headlines. The US to indict Assange on new accusations of recruiting hackers. UN chief asks Israel to desist from annexation plan in Security Council meeting. Egyptian authorities arrest journalist Nora Yunus as media crackdown intensifies. The RMT union condemns UK minister's comment on underpaid foreign workers. And Thailand's social movements commemorate 88th anniversary of the Siamese revolution. In our first story, the Donald Trump administration in the United States announced on Wednesday a new indictment against WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange. The indictment was announced in a press release by the US Department of Justice. The DOJ has been pursuing the case against Assange. In the second indictment, Assange will be facing a federal grand jury on accusations of having hired and conspired with activists. The new indictment will not add to the earlier one, but it will broaden the scope of the existing charges under federal secrecy and cybercrime laws. The DOJ has based the indictment on past statements by Assange. This includes the 2009 hacking at random conference in the Netherlands. There, Assange held a session demonstrating how to obtain unclassified but non-public documents from the US Congressional Research Committee. The statement does not mention whether the act in itself is illegal. The DOJ also claimed that Assange tried to obtain the services of LulzSec, Anonymous and other affiliated hackers in 2012 for a list of unnamed targets. It further alleged that Assange had obtained access to government computers of an unnamed NATO country in 2010. Assange's lawyers and supporters as well as human rights activists have slammed the new indictment by the US government as an attack on a news publisher for working with his sources. In our next story, in a virtual meeting of the UN Security Council on Wednesday, Secretary General Antonio Guterres asked Israel not to move ahead with its proposed annexation plan. Guterres argued that the plan will grievously harm the two-state solution. The UN Special Envoy for the Middle East, Nikolai Mladenov, based in East Jerusalem, also said in the meeting that Israel's unilateral move will take everyone further away from peace. Palestinian Foreign Minister Riyad al-Maliki spoke at the meeting as well as called for sanctions on Israel by the international community if the annexation happens. The new coalition government in Israel, headed by Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, has been preparing to annex Israeli settlements in the occupied Palestinian territories, along with large swaths of territory in the Jordan Valley. The annexation aligns with the deal of the century proposed by US President Donald Trump earlier this year. The Palestinian Authority and other Palestinian groups have warned that annexation will lead to large-scale uprisings. The PA also announced the end of all coordination with the Israeli government. Trump and Netanyahu's plans have received widespread condemnation from different quarters of the international community. Over 1,000 parliamentarians from more than 25 European countries have signed a joint letter to Israel, asking it to desist from the annexation. Palestinians have been organizing several demonstrations against the looming annexation. On Tuesday, thousands gathered in Jericho in the Jordan Valley in protest despite Israeli suppression. We now go to Egypt where authorities arrested yet another journalist on Wednesday. The authorities raided the office of Al Manasa, a news agency, and arrested its editor in chief, Nora Yunus. Officers took her to the Mahdi police station in Cairo where she was denied access to her lawyer. Yunus' lawyer stated that she will face a charge of managing a website without a license. This is despite the fact that Al Manasa's license renewal application is under review since 2018. Nora Yunus has worked with El Mazri Al Yum, a popular Arab, a daily, Arabic daily in Egypt, as well as with the Washington Post before founding Al Manasa in 2015. She has been critical of the government's record on human rights. Al Manasa is one of the more than 500 websites which has been banned or blocked or has had its license lapsed under the administration of Abdul Fattah el Sisi. Several journalists have also faced arrests and detention in the meantime. Activists have alleged that the arrests and harassment of journalists and news organizations has increased during the COVID-19 pandemic. Nora is the third woman journalist to have been arrested by authorities in the recent weeks. Last month, they had arrested Mada Masar founder Lina Atala, who was later released on bail. They also arrested Shima Sami, a young journalist working with Arabic language newspaper The Darb, for a piece on the government's detention policy. Yesterday, the National Union of Rail, Maritime and Transport Workers, or the RMT, intensified their campaigns to save jobs in British ferries. The RMT's action came in response to the UK Transport Secretary's statement that employing foreign seafarers on lower wages than UK-based seafarers is in line with international maritime laws. The Secretary's statement was in response to a parliamentary committee's questions over P&O's plan to retain the Filipino agency crew on £4.5 per hour. P&O Ferries, owned by the Dubai-based logistics company DP World, has been, at, has been at odds with the RMT for nearly two months now, 
The RMT's leadership accused the British government of abandoning UK-based workers while supporting the company's policy of paying foreign workers below the national living wage. The union has been demanding the nationalisation of P&O ferries, which controls major sea transport networks between the UK and the EU. And finally, Thailand's grassroots movement commemorates the 80th anniversary of the 1932 revolution. The Southern Peasants Federation of Thailand, along with the People's Democracy Movement of Thailand, organised a public meeting on Wednesday and do use the occasion to talk about the political situation of Thailand today. Social movements across the country have taken the anniversary as an opportunity to reflect upon the current civic military regime in place. The 1932 revolution in Thailand marked the transition of the Siam Kingdom from the absolutism of the Chakri dynasty into a constitutional monarchy. The revolution was led by a group of progressive bureaucrats and military leaders who founded the People's Party that rebelled against the monarchy's mismanagement of the country. The revolution eventually led to the first constitution of Thailand and also paved the way for universal adult suffrage by 1933, making it the second Asian country to do so. The defunct 1933 constitution has often been used as a model by democratic movements against successive military regimes, including the current dispensation. The public meeting by the Southern Peasants Federation of Thailand was live-streamed over social media and discussed the situation of the peasants under the military-supported government of Prayut Chanocha. They also discussed the problems of access to land and resources and the dangers faced by human rights activists. The group also called for movements to work towards democracy and amending the current constitution that entrenches military control over civilian government. Thailand has been run by a military-led coalition in power since to the 2014 coup that deposed the democratically elected government of Yingluk Sinawatra. That's all we have in this episode of the International Daily Roundup. We'll be back tomorrow with major news developments from across the world. Until then, keep watching People's Dispatch. Yeah, cantar,